A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. We celebrate today the feast of the Assumption of our Blessed Mother. Mary being taken up body. My dear sisters and brothers, some of us may have visited the Church of the Mission, the church where tradition claims uh, that our Blessed Mother's tomb was, from where she was taken up body and soul into heaven. There is no scriptural evidence for this um, truth that we believe in. And yet, down through the centuries, beginning with the sixth century, and very prevalent by the 12th century, People all over the world held this belief that because of her being called to be the mother of God and because of the way she cooperated with the grace of God that was at work in her, that our blessed mother, after her sojourn on this earth, fell asleep in the Lord and was taken up body and soul into heaven. Has it ever occurred to you, sisters and brothers, that for every feast of our blessed Lord that we celebrate, there is actually a corresponding feast also for the mother? Not because we just want to glorify her and deify her as a goddess. Not at all. Truth is far from it. She is like one of us, a creature. And yet, because of the way she cooperated with the grace of God, because she was the first disciple, and when she said yes, the church actually came to be in her, and because of the way she remained committed to the will of God and carried that out all her life, we believe that she is with God that because of this trust that we have, that she remained a sinless, not merely at the moment of her conception in her mother's womb, which is what we call the Immaculate Conception, but also because of her cooperation with the grace of God all her life, she was preserved from corruption. Because as Paul would say, Death is the wages of sin. And because she was free from sin, 
by the grace of God, and also because of her cooperation with that grace of God, we believe that she was assumed body and soul into heaven. The resurrection of Jesus is not a one-time cosmic reality that happened in the body of Jesus of Nazareth 2,000 years ago. That resurrection happens every day in every one of us. If only we, like the mother, cooperate with the grace of God that is at work in us. And so what we celebrate today is this faithfulness of God, the fact that what he promises, he keeps, that he preserves people who do their best and remain sinless. And that is actually the basis for our belief in this feast of the day, that our Blessed Mother, after she died a physical death, was taken up body and soul into heaven because she remained sinless and she remained close to the Lord, always living within the circle of his love, within the circle of his grace. And so, as we go through this celebration of the feast today, let's be reassured of this, that God keeps his word. The assumption of our blessed mother following the ascension of Jesus who goes to heaven by his own power is a promise of what is to come for you and for me. It is a pledge of God, what God has in store for us. And so let us together with the mother say, he who is mighty does great things for us. Holy is his name.